Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. Have you ever looked at something and thought, I can make that? Well, that's how this project started. I was looking over a table my wife and daughters had refinished for their channel, The White Lab House, and decided I wanted to make a table of my own. This story will be a two-parter, so let's get started from the top. I had a three-quarter inch sheet of birch plywood rip lengthwise left over from a simple desk build I did a few years ago. I decided to use my jigsaw with the clean cut blade to cut it to length because my circular saw blade would have shredded the plywood. I ended up regretting this decision, but we'll get to that part later. In the process, I learned that it helps to make sure your piece is facing the correct direction to get the benefit of that clean cut. Thankfully, I'm a quick study. I learned that within a few inches. The plywood was two feet wide, which wasn't wide enough for a table. So I talked to my woodworker father-in-law and came up with a plan to securely attach 1x6s with half lap joints to the perimeter. This will widen the surface and provide a solid wood edging to boot. I installed a 3 quarter inch dado stack and started cutting rabbits along the plywood. The plan was to cut the depth of the rabbits such that the 1x6s would sit slightly proud from the plywood. Then I would hand plane and sand the solid wood down to be flush with the plywood. After the plywood was ready, I cut the 1x6s to rough length, then started sneaking up on the rabbit cut. With a little help from my daughters, we glued the sides on. and after letting the glue cure, the joint was very strong. I had deliberately left the solid wood sides long so that I could come back and trim them up later. I pulled out my jigsaw again and cut both ends flush. I then had to recut the rabbits in the ends to account for the solid wood and the slight trimming I had just done. I also cut the rabbits in the 1x6 end pieces. And here's where I realized why using the jigsaw was a slightly less than optimal solution. While I had used a straight edge to keep the saw on track, the blade itself has more flexibility than I had realized. So my actual cut wandered slightly, causing a gap in the joint of the breadboard ends. To solve this, I threw a Hail Mary to my router and tried a technique I had seen used to joint two pieces nicely together. I positioned the plywood and solid wood parallel and just far enough apart that the straight bit from my router would trim material from both of them at the widest point. I then set up another straight edge from my router and set the depth to match the rabbit on the solid wood. I took a deep breath and dove in. I figured the worst case scenario would be cutting off the ends with my circular saw and a shiny new clean cut blade. As it turns out, it worked perfectly. Both sides of the connection fit together exactly. Every slight variation with the router had a matching variation on either side. I will definitely be utilizing this technique in the future. I glued it up and it fit like a glove. Since I'm a glutton for punishment, I used my jigsaw to cut the overhanging ends.
As you may be able to tell from this shot, the solid wood was sitting plenty proud of the plywood. So I had to put a bunch of elbow grease into planing it down flush. An artifact of my dado stack setup was also that there was a slight crown to the rabbit cuts, causing the solid wood to taper slightly upward once glued on. All this meant that I had to spend plenty of time with my block plane, plus also realized that I will likely be adding a bench plane to my arsenal at some point. After planing it down reasonably close, I moved on to everybody's favorite part of the project, the sanding. While rocking the sanding, I noticed a few places in the joints that could use some cover up. So I tried another technique I had seen used for just such an occurrence. I ran a bead of glue over the joint, then pressed a bunch of fine sawdust in. I let it sit overnight, then anxiously sanded to see how it worked. I'd say it worked okay, but next time, I'll make sure to use super fine sawdust that's really more of a powder. I sanded the rest of the top to 220 grit, being very careful not to spend too much time eroding the plywood veneer. One last thing that was bugging me was the slight gaps on the underside of the half lap joints for the breadboard ends. So I cut some strips to glue in there, then planed and sanded the joint smooth. As the finishing touch, I added an eighth inch round over to both the top side and the bottom side of the tabletop. One thing I learned on a previous project is to wait until the sanding is done to do this, or you lose some of the round over to the sander. tabletop was ready to go. I had waited to build the frame until I knew what the final dimensions of the top were going to be, and I'm really glad I did. In the next installment, I'll show you how I built the frame with mortise and tenon joints. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. We've got a lot more woodworking projects of various sizes queued up, including the other half of this one, and we'd love to share them all with you. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.